Hi, and welcome to this episode of John's Model Kit Review. Today, we are going to be looking at Airfix's 148 scale Messerschmitt BF109E kit. This is Airfix kit number A05120. In this review, I will attempt to answer the question with all of the BF109E kits available, is this Airfix BF109E worth building? We're going to take a look at the built-up model. We're also going to take a look at the instructions. We will then look at the color callouts and marking options in this kit. We'll look at the clear parts. We'll also look at the buildability, the fit of this kit. I'll talk about the surface detailing on the kit as well. And then, because this is a fairly basic kit, I will go over my painting and weathering techniques on this model. I'll focus a little bit on how to make a very basic model look a little bit more detailed than it actually is. And I'll talk about how to add surface detail with finishing techniques. I built this kit at the same time that I built Edward's BF109E kit and Tamiya's BF109E kit. And that gives me a nice perspective on the three different kits and how they compare to one another. So I will be referencing those kits as well in this review. The marking option I used came from an Edouard BF109E Profipack kit. And those markings are for a 1JG2 aircraft based in Bassenheim, Germany in 1940. In looking through the instructions on this kit, you can see that it's a very basic kit. Steps one through six really deal with the interior of the aircraft and it's got molded on seat belts. If you're going to replace the kit canopy, I would suggest also replacing the kit seat as that's really what's gonna be visible through a clearer canopy. If you're gonna use the kit canopy, I would say just paint the molded on seat belts. You really can't see very well through that thick kit canopy. Steps nine through 11 cover the prop. They also cover the interior sidewall detail. In step 12, the fuselage is closed up around the interior and prop. Steps 13 through 15 deal with the engine cover. Step 16 is the wing, and depending on if you use a bomb rack or a fuel tank rack, you'll want to drill out the two holes in the middle of the lower wing. Step 17 is mating the fuselage to the wing. Steps 18 through 20 deal with the lower oil cooler. Steps 21 through 23 deal with the lower radiators. Steps 24 and 25 deal with the tail planes on the kit, and steps 26 and 27 are just assembling the flaps. Step 28 deals with the slats. Step 29 is dealing with the flaps. Step 30 is dealing with the ailerons. Step 31 covers the wing gun inserts and the exhaust and intake installation. Step 31 is a continuation of the tail planes. Steps 34 through 36 cover the landing gear installation. Steps 38 and 39 cover the fuel tank installation or ordinance installation, really depending on which option you choose. And steps 40 through 43 cover the cockpit glass installation. There are three different marking options in the kit. These are all represented by nice color callouts on a full color four view layout. As I stated earlier, I use markings from an Edward kit to complete this model. In this view, if you look at the top of the wings, what I have done is draw in detail that is not there in the actual plastic engraved detail. And so I have used pastels applied with a very closely cropped paintbrush to represent the lines of rivets that are prevalent on a BF-109. I've done this underneath the cockpit as well, and I've done it faintly on the tail planes and on the sides of the fuselage. This kit's very basic. There's not a whole lot of engraved detail. What is there is a little bit heavy-handed. That in combination with the thick, clear parts on the plane tend to make the Airfix BF-109 look a little bit toy-like in comparison with a Tamiya or with an Edward. I enjoy weathering and detailing basic kits. I'm trying to improve them and make them a little bit nicer than they are. And so this actually sits next to my Tamiya on the shelf. It also sits next to my Edward BF-109. And it looks decent. From three feet away, there's not a whole lot of difference. But when you do get up close and look at the kits and look at the actual engraved surface detail, this kit is just clearly a notch below the other two kits. 
I really enjoyed building this kit. It was a fun build. It was a pretty simple build. There weren't any real challenges in construction. There weren't any major gaps that needed filling. And so the fit of the kit, the design of the kit, everything went together pretty well. The kit decals weren't bad. I used a couple of those in combination with the Edouard decals. I know I've read some poor reviews on the stock kit decals in these Airfix kits, but I didn't really have any trouble with them. They were a little bit on the flat side, but to me that's not a big deal. I used pastels to weather this. I also used some oil-based washes and some oil-based paint to streak the oil that would be leaking out of the engine and dirty up the underside of the airframe a little bit. In conclusion, with all of the BF109 kits available, is this Airfix kit still worth building? I really had a lot of fun building this kit. It went together easily. There were no construction challenges. I enjoyed taking a basic kit and trying to dress it up a little bit with my weathering techniques. It looks nice when finished. It really is a good kit and from three feet away, there's not really much of a difference between this and a Tamiya and an Edouard kit. However, when you get up close, you can see the difference in detail. If you only build the latest and greatest, there are more accurate, more detailed options out there. This is a fun kit for a less experienced modeler. It can also be found pretty inexpensively, and so if your modeling budget is somewhat limited, this is a decent option, and you can turn it out well. On the downside, the clear parts on this kit really let it down a bit. They're probably two notches down below the Edouard kit and below the Tamiya kit. They're just thick. The framing is a little bit clumsy as well. And the clarity really distorts what you can see of the interior. Well, I'd love to know what you guys think. If any of you have built this kit before and want to share your experience in the comment section below, please feel free to do so. As always, I hope you found this video entertaining and informative. And until next time, model on.